So we're going to get started. Today we're talking about creating brand advocates. So I'm really excited to have you guys here. We're going to dive into brand advocacy and how that works in the coaching industry. So over the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to look at different strategies and insights that are aimed at empowering established coaches like yourselves to leverage your brand uh, for exponential growth through the creation of loyal brand advocates. So throughout our time here, we're going to uncover the power of word of mouth marketing. We're going to discuss techniques for identifying and nurturing brand advocates and provide practical tips for fostering a community around your brand. So hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll walk away with some, some things that you can action um, to amplify your brand's impact and cultivate a tribe of passionate brand advocates. So let's dive in. So firstly, who am I? Who am I to be telling you this? Well, my name's Nick. If we haven't met, I'm the Brand Samurai, and we're on a mission to help 1 million coaches, consultants, and agency owners through the power of branding. Um, I've been in branding and marketing since 2018. Um, I built my very first website back in 2004, <laughs> and it wasn't very good. Uh, that's both due to my lack of design skills back then and also the limitations of technology. Um, but I've always been very interested in business, design, and marketing, even since way back then. And now I get to share my passion for these and other topics with other people, which makes me happy. Um, in the time I've been doing this, I've successfully built brands for clients all around the world, ranging from new businesses all the way up to eight-figure coaching companies and everything in between. And... Also, my other passion is martial arts. I've been studying, training, teaching, and competing in martial arts since uh, 2000, so 24 years this year. And in that time, um, I've taken a lot of things that I've learned from different people and developed a process of taking something which is a complex concept, breaking it down into very granular components, refining those, so that when you put it all back together, it works in a way which is better than had you done it any other way. Um, and this is why, you know, from that background, I can do what I do uh, in a way that nobody else can. That's what sets me apart. So that's a bit about me. Now, uh, in, this, in this webinar, I have an offer for three people at the end, three people. Um, there's a number of things that you need for a powerhouse brand. Uh, but for today, in this webinar, we're going to be focused on uh, brand experience and advocates right here. So that's what today is all about, your brand experience and creating brand advocates. All right. Who's ready to get started? Let's have a look. Michael, you're on the live as well. You're, you're good at accomplishing this. You're in two places at once. It's a, it's a rare talent. Nina, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. We've got iPhone 3. I don't know who iPhone 3 is, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions, I do have the chat open both on Facebook Live and on Zoom. If you have any questions, just pop them in there. I'll, uh, I'll check back periodically. Um, but we're going to get started. Okay. So brand advocacy in the coaching industry is paramount for driving organic growth by harnessing word of mouth referrals while simultaneously simultaneously fostering a supportive community that enhances trust, credibility, and long-term client relationships. If you've got a business and you have, it's transactional, they buy something one time and then chances are they don't come back, or you have something where you, you, you have clients who come to you again and again and again, which one is going to be better off? So the one that has a higher lifetime value for your client or customer. And that's why we want to build long-term relationships. Okay. It's better for sustainability. Now, most of you already know that, but how does that tie in with brand advocacy? So 
what is brand advocacy? Let's let's define what it is that we're talking about. So let's start by understanding the concept of brand advocacy. Brand advocacy goes beyond mere satisfaction. Okay. It's about having clients who are not just pleased with our products or services, but are also enthusiastic about promoting your brand to other people. Those are the individuals who go out of their way to share their positive experiences with friends, family, and their network, um, essentially becoming ambassadors for your brand. So brand advocates play a significant role in driving organic growth by spreading positive word of mouth recommendations. And their advocacy acts as a powerful marketing tool, attracting new clients who trust the recommendations of their peers. So you're leveraging the, the trust of them rather than you trying to build it for yourself. And brand advocates also contribute to fostering a sense of community around your brand. They help to create a supportive environment where clients feel connected to your brand and each other, leading to increased loyalty and engagement. Understanding the importance of brand advocacy is the first step towards harnessing its power for the growth and success of your coaching business. Okay. So we talked about a few things there. There's, there's a few elements in brand advocacy. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into those. The first one is the power of word of mouth. Now, most of, most of the time when you hear about, think about word of mouth, it's for a very long time, it's been referring to sort of brick and mortar businesses, um, uh, things which weren't online. And as online business starts to, you know, increase and has been increasing for the past several years, the power of word of mouth hasn't diminished. Um, it, but it's had a very slow uptake compared to how quickly the online world has exploded. And so if we can start to use this, the power of word of mouth, which has traditionally been very powerful uh, offline, if we can start to bring that online, we're going to receive that benefit as well. So what are we talking about with the power of word of mouth? So word of mouth has long been recognized as one of the most potent forms of marketing and the statistics back it up. So studies show that 92%, that's huge, 92% of consumers trust recommendations from friends and family over other forms of advertising. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Who who here has had someone say, you know, a friend or a family member say, oh, we went to that new restaurant that opened up in town. Have you been there yet? And you go, no, I haven't been. And they said, oh, it was really good. We did, we did this and this and this. And they tell you about their experience and their story, them telling you their experience has made you want to go more than their grand opening, you know, marketing campaign. Who's had that happen before? I know I have. And this is, this is so true. But what makes that word of mouth so compelling? It's the human element. So recommendations from people we know and trust resonate on a deeper level, tapping into emotions and building credibility. When someone that we trust speaks highly of a product or service, we're more likely to take notice and consider it for ourselves. And as I said, it's because they're leveraging the they're leveraging the trust that we have with our friend or our family member. If they think it's good, then it must be good, right? If if the company says, "Oh, we're really good at this," you're you're a bit skeptical. Of course, you're going to say that. Um, but if somebody else that you already know, like and trust, tells you it, then you don't believe that they're going to be intentionally steering you wrong. So that makes us trust that recommendation so much more. Now, if, uh, if we as the brand can get people speaking on our behalf, this is what this is a very large part of the power of word of mouth marketing. Airbnb case study. So one of the companies, Airbnb, who's heard of Airbnb before? 
most people have. It's all around the world. Okay. So this started back in 2008. Um, and it was a platform, if you're not familiar with it, uh, where people can rent out their own homes to travelers looking for unique and affordable accommodation. Now, initially, they were facing some really big challenges in gaining traction uh, because nobody, it was new, it was different, and nobody trusted them. And that's both the hosts, the people who wanted to rent out their house, and the guests um, because it was very different from everything else that was in sort of the hospitality industry. So they came up with a strategy uh, which was a referral program that incentivized both the hosts who were renting out their house and the guests to refer new users to the platform with discounts or credits, uh, travel credits. And so hosts were encouraged to provide exceptional experiences for their guests, leading to positive reviews and word of mouth recommendations. They also leveraged a lot of social media and user-generated content, which is the people who are renting these houses, they, they talk about their experiences, um, which, again, is the other side of fueling word of mouth. So what was the result of this? So by harnessing this power of word of mouth, Airbnb rapidly expanded its user base, reaching millions of users all over the world. Uh, the referral program played a significant role in driving organic growth, which uh, had referrals accounting for a significant portion of new user signups. Now, this is an excellent case study in recent history of how um, something which is new, which is disrupting industries, has leveraged social media and word of mouth people referring people uh, that they know, like, and trust to build a company to a global position in a record amount of time. Uh, so positive word of mouth and user-generated content contributed to building that trust and credibility, which is the thing that they were missing. And that established Airbnb as a trusted platform for travelers seeking authentic and personalized experiences that you just don't get from a hotel. And so the success of this uh, demonstrates the transformative power that word of mouth marketing still has on the world. And uh, it's, it's a really good success story of how Someone can come up with an idea which is different to everything else which has been established for a long time and completely disrupt um, existing industries. Um, so this is a really good case study um, because everyone knows about Airbnb. It's all over the world. It doesn't matter where you come from. You've heard of it. Um, and this is uh, a really positive sort of illustration of how word of mouth marketing can grow a brand into an international success story. Okay. So we know about why, why brand advocates are important. How do we identify who these people are? Okay. Um, brand advocates often exhibit certain characteristics that set them apart, such as unwavering loyalty, genuine enthusiasm for your brand and a willingness to engage with your content and your community. So the way that they interact with you and your content is going to set them apart from other people, which gives you a good indication these people might be a good, um, a good fit for brand advocacy. So here are Two strategies for identifying them within your client base. Number one is analyzing engagement levels. So you can monitor client engagement across various channels, such as social media, email, and your coaching platform. You can also look for signs of active participation, such as frequent interactions, likes, comments, and shares on your content. And this helps you to identify clients who consistently engage with your brand. They're demonstrating enthusiasm and positivity, and they actively participate in discussions or community activities. Now, you've probably experienced this already. When you put content out there, you, there's always you know, two or three people who 
they like every single post and you, you always see the notification, you click on the notification, ah, there they are. These are the people you, you want to be talking to, okay? And the next strategy is soliciting feedback. So you, you can proactively seek feedback from clients through things like surveys, polls, one-on-one um, -on -one conversations. So you, you're asking clients about their overall satisfaction with your coaching services, their likelihood of recommending you to others, and their willingness to provide testimonials or referrals. Now, this is very, very widespread, this practice. Um, and you'll you'll recognize it when you jump on the phone with XYZ Corporation and they say, please hang on the line after the call so you can give us a, a quick two or three question survey about our service today, right? Most of the time you hang up. But all of these companies are asking for your feedback. And there's no reason why you can't do the same thing. So pay attention to clients who express high levels of satisfaction, enthusiasm, and willingness to advocate for your brand, because they're the most likely to become strong advocates in the future. Additionally, having the right tools in place can make the process more manageable. So utilizing tools like social media, um, different analytics platforms or customer relationship management, CRM software, can help you track and analyze um, advocate behavior, allowing you to identify your most passionate supporters and nurture those relationships for long-term advocacy. Now, again, I want to emphasize that. It's about building long-term relationships, especially with the people that you want representing your brand on your behalf. Now, Creating an exceptional client experience. How do you get people to be super satisfied or so satisfied with your service that they want to tell other people about it? You have to create an exceptional client experience. How do we do that? So in today's competitive landscape, simply meeting client expectations may not be enough. Uh, so many people are competing for the same space. A lot of people are doing the same thing. So if you're doing the same thing as everyone else, you don't stand out. By going above and beyond, you not only differentiate yourself from the competition, but you're also cultivating strong relationships with your clients. So this is the start. So how can you deliver an exceptional experience that leaves a lasting impression? Number one, personalized communication. It's, it's one thing to have an email sent out to you, and you can tell that, you know, they've just got their template or whatever. It's an entirely different thing when you know that the person has personally sat down to write you a personal email. Um, that That's the same with if you're sending a message. You can send a voice message, which is delivered solely for that person, or you can send a text message, which you have copy and pasted to everyone. Now, even if it's written the exact same way, the delivery is going to be entirely different and the energy behind it is entirely different. When something is personal, you feel it. It's that human connection. The other part is uh, proactive problem solving. So if you see that someone is perhaps struggling or they need a bit more help, which goes a little bit outside of um, what your program is, you can proactively go out of your way to help them, to, to make them succeed, to help them to succeed. And this is going the extra mile. So finding different ways to basically just genuinely care about the success of your clients. People feel that. People feel the, the authenticity and the genuine nature of you caring about their success. Okay. Building emotional connections. This is probably one of the biggest parts in branding, period. So everything to do with branding is building emotional connection. And brand advocacy is no different. So um, the importance of building emotional connections with your clients. So emotional resonance plays a vital role in fostering brand advocacy by, by creating meaningful and authentic relationships. This is something that you can't fake. I don't care 
how good you think you are at, you know, putting on a face and doing this and that. It comes across, the energy comes across, and people feel it. You cannot substitute genuine, authentic human connection. No amount of uh, automation or AI or any of these, you know, techn technological advancements are going to replace that. I don't care how good it gets. Nothing is going to replace genuine human connection. And when clients feel emotionally con connected to your brand, they are more likely to become loyal advocates who champion your business to others. Now, the cost of this, what's the cost? You have to put yourself into it. You can't hide behind a facade or, or, a, or wear a mask and keep people at arm's distance. You can't do that. If you want to build the kind of relationships where people are excited to tell other people about who you are, what you do, and what you've done for them, you have to give of yourself. That's a prerequisite. I don't think that you can succeed in coaching, period, without putting yourself into it. Once we have identified these people and we've started to build these emotional connections, what do we do? How do we get them to take the step from being really excited about our brand to advocating for it? We need to empower your clients to advocate. So we're going to have a look at things such as storytelling, which allows you to share your brand's values and mission in a compelling way. Encouraging and incentivizing advocacy is key to cultivating a community of passionate supporters who actively promote your business. So there's certain strategies such as um, referral programs, like I said with the Airbnb, um, where clients are rewarded for referring new business. You can also look at offering exclusive perks or discounts to advocates. Again, Airbnb did that for the, the, uh, the travelers, um, and they also did another version of it for the hosts. Um, and then publicly recognizing their contributions through shout-outs or testimonials. This is incredibly powerful. And as I said, this is why Airbnb is such an excellent case study, because they did these things, they're fairly simple things that, that anyone here can implement, but they did it consistently, they did it over, uh, powerfully, and they empowered people, they made people want to be involved. And that's how they built their brand to a global powerhouse in a very short space of time. Also, creating shareable content and experiences is essential for inspiring clients to spread the word about your brand. Now, if you have a think about, um, Instagram is really good for this particular example. You get tagged in a post by someone who's a friend and you go, what, what did you tag me in? What is this? And it has nothing to do with you. But there's a company who's running a competition and it says like and share this to two people to go in the draw to win. Da, da, da. Okay. Now, this is excellent um, empowerment because they they created shareable content and they're asking people to share to go in the draw to win something. Now this is um, shareable content in its in its uh, simplest form, um, and the, there's lots of companies out there who do this, um, and they do it really uh, almost I want to say virally over Instagram. The, the the platform is built for that kind of um, engagement. Okay. Now, finally, leveraging social proof and testimonials can further bolster your brand's credibility and also encourage advocacy. So by showcasing positive feedback and testimonials from satisfied clients, you provide valuable social proof that reinforces trust and encourages others to engage with your brand. Now, one of the shopping habits that many people have now is they want something or they'll see an ad for something. They read the ad, which is what gives them the initial drive, the initial desire, I want this thing. The very next thing they do is they go and find reviews on it, and they're actively looking for negative reviews. The ad has given me all of these. Um, it's made me excited. I want to find out, is this legit? Is this real? So they, they Google it, they check for reviews, they check other people's experiences. And if you've only got, you know, 
five-star reviews, nothing but five-star reviews, that's a red flag for a lot of people because it feels like you've, it's not genuine. You, you can't possibly have 100 five-star reviews and nothing else. There has to be some people who feel that it wasn't exactly what they wanted or it didn't live up to this, that, or the other. And if that exists, it, it adds authenticity. And people actually trust it more because of it. So having um, different testimonials from clients um, adds to the credibility and the relatability of your product or service. So having, even if people give you um, a, a testimonial and you're like, oh, that's not exactly the kind of testimonial I want, you should still put it up there because even if it's a four-star review, that's going to help in building the trust and building the credibility. So any testimonial that you get, as long as it's not absolutely horrible, um, is good, is, is a good thing. Okay. Now, cultivating a community. We've spoken about brand advocates, how to identify them, um, how to empower them to start to, to promote on your behalf and also incentivizing that to, to sweeten the deal for them if they are bringing you new business. Now, how do we create a community around this? So building a strong community not only creates a sense of belonging among your clients, but it also fosters more loyalty, more trust, and even greater advocacy. So it's about creating a space where clients can connect with each other, share experiences, and support one another on their journey. So it's more than the, the relationship that you've built with them. It's about the relationship that they start to build with each other without you having to be there. This is, this is a supportive and nurturing community. So how do we create this kind of community? So there are a couple of different strategies. The first, which is fairly simple. Most people should understand this, but it does need to be said. Open communication channels where clients can interact and engage with your brand and with each other. So an example of this, if you have a, um, a lot of different relationships with people who are advocating on your behalf, but their only means of communication is with you directly, then they can't communicate with each other and you're not going to build a community around this. So having something like a page or a group or a Discord channel, a WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Um, there's lots of different technologies now that, that build community, but the thing that you need to have is open communication channels, which means they can interact with each other without you needing to be present. If you can build such a thing using and leveraging any of these uh, already existing technologies, you're well on your way to creating a community. Another way is organizing events or meetups, um, and that can be either online or in person, and it can be business-related or not. They can be social events. Um, and these provide opportunities for community members to connect on a deeper level. And then you can also create valuable resources such as educational content or exclusive perks for community members um, that can further enhance their experience and foster a sense of belonging. So you want these people to feel like, I've, I've found my people. This is my group. This is, these are the people that I want to be hanging around. They're on the same mission as me. They have the same vision as me. We're all moving in the same direction, and we're all helping each other to get there. These are the kinds of things that you want to be building into your community um, so that you can bring about the best in the people who advocate your brand. So... Amplifying advocacy through brand storytelling. This is incredibly powerful. Now, I've, I've spoken about storytelling in, in previous um, webinars. I'm going to touch on it again. So story, storytelling is, powerful, is a powerful amplifier for brand advocacy, and that's because it's a powerful tool that allows you to connect with your audience on a deeper level by tapping into their emotions and experiences. Now, storytelling is one of the 
foundational and most powerful ways for humans to connect with each other. When you meet someone for the first time, or maybe you've met them a little bit, um, but you haven't gotten to know them very well, how do you get to know them? It's through exchanging stories. Someone will tell you a story about what they did at work, and then you usually come back with another story which is relatable and you can bond over it. People bond over stories. And this shares the, this, this shows that we have had relatable experiences, we have things in common, um, and it makes sense for us to continue the relationship and get to know each other more. Um, so by crafting a compelling, compelling brand narrative, you can communicate your values, your mission, and your unique selling propos proposition in a way that resonates with your story. Your brand story humanizes your business and makes it more relatable and memorable to your clients. Now, I did this at the very start of this webinar. I told you about my experience in karate. I've been doing it for 20 years. And in that process, I've built um, a system of taking complex ideas, breaking them down, putting them back together. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with branding, but it does set me apart from all the other people who do branding. And I also told you about our mission to help 1 million coaches, consultants, and agency owners through the power of branding. So at the very start of this, I shared with you my mission. I shared with you what sets me apart and the way by telling it as a story of me going through my karate journey makes it more memorable than if I just said, I have this system and I do that, that, that. Okay. So I did that at the start of this story and you at the start of this webinar, and you can do the exact same thing. If you can create it in a storytelling format, it makes it more memorable and it makes it easier for your brand advocates to on tell the story, to share it with other people. So by weaving storytelling into various marketing channels, such as social media posts, email campaigns, and content creation, you're leveraging the power of storytelling. And you can inspire your audience to become advocates for your brand, spreading your mission, your message and mission far and wide. All right. Action plan for creating brand advocates. So there's a couple of steps to creating brand advocates in your business. And we've looked at these already. So um, we know the, the importance of brand advocacy and the strategies and nurture and how to nurture them. So you need to understand that brand advocacy is all about taking and harnessing the power of word of mouth marketing. Now, remember, it's 92% more effective if people hear it from a friend or a family member than from uh, a marketing or an advertising campaign that they see. 92% more effective. So if you can get people speaking positively on your behalf, you're going to be um, miles and miles ahead of if you just rely on your own marketing and your own advertising strategies. So understanding the power of word of mouth marketing and leveraging storytelling, um, you can build communities and you can help to share your message in a way which is relatable and human and authentic. Um, and there's a, a range of different ways that we can do this. So um, like the Airbnb case study that we looked at, referral programs, um, you, can, you can incentivize people to refer you business and that can be um, like an affiliate system um, or, or giving people discounts and things like that. You also want to create shareable content. Now, the Airbnb um case study we looked at, they created shareable content by encouraging the people who were hosts to create experiences that the people who were traveling to their house wanted to share with their friends and family. And the people who were traveling and they went to different pe people's houses, which they rented as Airbnbs, they were telling people, you know, this house was amazing. It had this and this and this and this, but all of the credit went to Airbnb. And they told their friends and family on social media about their trip. So all of this is creating shareable content um, and asking people to share it. You ask people to share your content. 
And then we look at fostering a sense of community. So open communication channels, creating a space, whether that's a Facebook group or a Discord channel or a WhatsApp or even offline, you can do it uh, a regular meetup. Um, but creating opportunities for people to connect and to share without you having to be involved. Um, and then also we can look at forging collaborative partnerships. So that can be someone else who is a service provider similar to you and you have the same target audience, but you're not in direct competition with each other. You can cross promote. You can promote their things. They can promote your things and you can build those kind of collaborative partnerships. All of these things are really powerful strategies for building brand advocates, people who are going to promote your brand on your behalf. Okay, so next steps. As I said, there's quite a few things that go into creating a powerhouse brand. Um, and after working with coaches at all different stages of growth and brand development, I've put together a comprehensive process that can develop a powerhouse brand, regardless of where you are in your scaling journey. And I've distilled this down into a 12-week program that takes you by the hand and walks you through it step by step. This is called Branding Brilliance. Um, and it's all about elevating your business to the next level and beyond by forging your aligned signature brand. So what does this entail? We do a 30-minute coaching session every week. This is if you do the one-on-one -on -one option. There's a group option where it's an hour. We go through 12 in-depth branding modules, and I've already shown you a sneak peek of what they are. Um, you have access to our online training portal. Uh, you have lifetime access to all of the course materials, so you can come back if at some point you want to revisit it, or even if you want to build a, an entirely new brand, you know how to do it. You'll also get access to all of our current and future courses in the Branding Dojo. So at the moment, we've got courses on color psychology, how that applies to branding, um, shape psychology and how that applies to branding, the brand archetypes and the different psychological maps that they include. And we're going to be building on that as we go. You also get a personalized success blueprint or roadmap for your brand. And we look at branding and marketing plans and strategies. We also run through our unique branding trinity process. I did a webinar on that last year. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. We also do a complete marketing overview for your business. And then we master your brand messaging and we do an in-depth brand audit. And on top of that, you also get 12 months access to our SaaS membership software as a service to help you to run your business. That includes the CRM, the funnel builder, the website builder, the whole lot. And that's valued at over $1,000 right there. So what are these 12 in-depth branding modules? What are those? So number one is know thyself. You need to know who you are, what your core values are, your vision, your mission, your purpose, and your why before you go any further. The second thing is you need to know who your audience is. You need to know who it is that you're trying to talk to, why they should care about what you have to say, and uh, building a client avatar, a target audience, and a niche so that you can tailor your marketing and your message to, the, to that audience. Then we do unique value proposition and brand positioning. So once you know who you are and you know who you're trying to speak to, you can then start to build your brand position and your, your unique value proposition to resonate with those people. Brand voice and tone, we talk about how to craft your, your messaging and your personality for your brand. Brand experience and advocates, that's a lot of what we just spoke about today, how to craft an experience which is memorable and that makes people want to tell other people about it. Visual identity is by far the most popular session that we do. This is where we start to look at your logos, your color, your fonts, your imagery. This is where we breathe life into your brand and you can see it coming together and it looks you know, sexy and exciting. Then from there, we take the visual identity and we build your website, your course platform and your sales funnels. Now that we've built out those things, we need to drive traffic to it. And we do that with a content strategy and a messaging strategy. 
Then we look at your marketing overview. How is this all putting together? How does the whole machine work? And then we look at organic methods. And once the organic methods are working, we look at paid methods. So all of that is branding brilliance. Now, the next question, most people say, oh, that sounds great, Nick. How much is it? Glad you asked. Here it is. Now, Michael, you're already a part of this. And Julie, you're already a part of this. So we've got a couple of people who are already in this program. Um, so for all of this stuff, what we're talking about not uh, is option two or option three. You've got either a one-on-one -on -one option where me and you work together personally, or you join the group um, and we all do it together. We all, we all go through it together. So for the group one, we go through each module, one per week, 12 weeks. So you can either do $14.97 up front or $149 US a week. Now, as I said, there's an offer here for three people, only three people. So if you're one of the first three people to message me after this webinar, um, you get 33% off, which will take that down to either $9.97 US up front or $99 a week for 12 weeks, okay? And the same thing applies for the one-on-one. -on -one. So if we're doing it one-on-one -on -one and you, you just want personalized attention, you also get 33% off if you're one of the first three people. So that will take it down to $1.997 or $1.99 US a week, okay? <clears throat> so that's only for the first three people um, everyone else, uh, if you if you message me, you can still be a part of the group coaching. You can still do uh, the one on one if you'd like. Um, but if you're not one of the first three people, you won't get that discount, unfortunately. All right, that's about it for me today, guys. I hope this has been enlightening for you. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I'm just going to stop share. All right. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Um, we're about. 10 minutes. Oh, that's pretty much spot on. Uh, about 50 minutes that went for. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your morning with me. I really appreciate it. If you're watching on Facebook or on the replay, um, thank you very much. You can reach out to me. Just search The Brand Samurai. I'm on, very, I'm on pretty much every platform. Search The Brand Samurai and you'll see my face. All right. Um, thank you for the webinar. Very enlightening. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. We're going to go uh, a lot deeper in this in the program. So look forward to that. Um, Michael and Julie, we're going to be, um, I'm really excited to see how your brands explode after doing this program. So, um, thank you very much guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.